This is the other experiment. It's in Table 2, and this is page 20 in your lab manual. And for this one, you only need nine tubes, but again, they should be labeled. The volumes are going to be all the same um, for each set of tubes. And this time, notice that the temperature is constant through the whole thing. It's just being done at room temperature throughout the entire experiment. What you're changing here is the pH. So you're going to use different pH buffers. And this is a little bit confusing. Notice that in each of your experiments, you're going to add four mils, four milliliters of a buffer but you add different buffers to each one. So you're going to look at the buffer column, the pH column here, and then you're going to add the correct buffer to get you to that pH. For instance, this is going to be four uh, milliliters of a pH three buffer. This is gonna be the pH five, pH seven, and pH nine. Now all of these are done at room temperature, so you don't have to wait around for the incubation. Now one important thing, is that in both of these experiments, both the temperature and the pH experiment, tube number one is your blank. This is what you're going to be use, using to calibrate or to zero the spectrophotometer at the start. And notice what's happening in here is that there is no hydrogen peroxide. You're leaving out one of the reactants. And so in this, uh, even though you have the guaiacol and you have the enzyme, you're not going to get any reaction taking place because one of the reactants is missing. And so this is going to serve as your blank for all of the experiments that you'll do. This is the equipment that each group will get. So first of all, you have a set of big tubes and a grease pencil. And these are the ones that you need to label uh, either 1 through 11 for the temperature experiment or 1 through 9 for the pH experiment. There's also two small tubes. These are for the spectrophotometer, and we'll use those later. Then these beakers over here are what you're going to use to get the reagents that you'll be using in the reaction. Now, the most important thing to notice here is the color coding. Each one of these has a color, and they each have a matching pipette that has the same color tape on. You have to pay close attention to the colors to make sure that you're not contaminating one solution with the other, because if you get a little bit of the enzyme mixed in with some of the reactants, then your reaction is going to start before you're ready to, to look at it. All right, so next we have to go and uh, get the reagents that you'll be using for this. So these are all the reagents that you need to do the enzyme lab. So there's the glycol, the turnip extract that has the enzyme, there's the hydrogen peroxide, and then a pH 5 buffer. Now, now, rather than have everybody come over here and measure out little bits of these, what we want is for one person from each group to come over and get an aliquot, that's a little sample from each of these. And notice that it says on the signs exactly how much you need to take. So for instance, here I brought my pH 5 buffer with the yellow tape, uh, my pH 5 beaker with the yellow tape over from my desk. And I see here I need to take 30 mils of this back. So using the, uh, the correct graduated cylinder, I'll measure out 30 mils of that, take this back, and this should be enough for the entire experiment. The reagents for the pH experiment are stored on the other side of the lab, but it's the same sort of thing. For each of the different pH buffers, there is a uh, dedicated graduated cylinder and a little sign telling you exactly how much you're going to need uh, to complete your experiment. So back at my bench, my group and I mixed up uh, our reagents in our, our labeled tubes. So here I have tube two and tube three for the temperature experiment. And remember, one of them should have about three mils in it, the other one should have about five mils. Make sure you look at it and test, and make sure you've got the right amount in there. Now, in the lab there will also be ice baths and water baths to get them at the right temperature. Remember, you have to put them in there and leave them in for 10 minutes before you start the experiment. We're finally ready to actually watch the reaction. Now, it's important to remember that once the uh, reactants and the enzyme get mixed together, that reaction is going to start right away. So you have to be all ready to go as soon as, before you mix these. That means getting the spectrophotometer ready. Unlike in the last lab where you change the wavelength all the time, this time it's going to be left at 500 nanometers for the entire time. Now, I've already blanked it, so I'm going to take my blank out and save this for later. And now I've got my carefully measured uh, reagents that have been incubated in the right temperature or the correct pH and we're ready to go. So as soon as I mix these together, somebody else in my group needs to start watching the clock because we're going to take readings every 20 seconds. All right, so here I go. I'm going to mix them together by just pouring them back and forth in these big tubes. And then I'm going to fill up my spectrophotometer tube about halfway, wipe it off, make sure there aren't any fingerprints on there, put it in, and go. Another thing you'll notice is that the numbers on the spectrophotometer are not going to stabilize and level off. That's because the reaction is actually going on. More of that amber-colored uh, product is being produced all the time. So don't wait for the numbers to, to stop moving. They're going to keep changing and just take the numbers when you get to each time point. 
So it's 120 seconds later, and this reaction is done. You'll see that uh, you can actually see that amber color in the, the uh, spectrophotometer tube and also in the leftover uh, mixture that you have in your big tube. This is kind of important to clean up quickly because this amber uh, material will stain the tubes. So everything can get dumped down the sink with the big tubes, you can use one of these brushes at the sink to scrub them out and get all that out of there, but do not use this brush on the spectrophotometer tube. If you try and stick it in there, it's going to scratch up the surface and that's going to make the readings not accurate. So just dump this out, rinse it a couple times, and you'll be ready to use it again.